Season 1 Episode 2 of Adventure Time or Trouble Lumpy Space really didn't keep my interest. The episode begins with Finn, Jake, LSP, and Bubblegum bouncing on marshmallows. To me, that was just the most random opening there is. I really do want to be fair to Trouble in Lumpy Space despite me not liking it too much just because I want to give it at least a chance. After Finn and Jake fell off the marshmallows, LSP is bragging about how it's the easiest thing in the world to bounce. However, she's not bouncing. She's floating, rather. Her very first attempt at bouncing ends immediately because she flies off the marshmallow and coincidentally bites Jake. Thus, starting the real premise of Trouble in Lumpy Space. Once Jake gets bit, the area around the bite marks gets all lumpy. And LSP carefully explains about how, because she bit him, he's gonna get lumpy until he's completely nothing but lumps. After Finn finds out what's gonna happen to Jake, he immediately expresses his concern for him and orders LSP to take them to Lumpy Space. LSP and the two boys relocate to the said portal, which is actually a frog and a mushroom. The frog requests for a password and LSP quotes, Whatever, it's 2009. I'm wondering if this is an easter egg of some sort, although I'm not sure when the pilot was made. And if that's the case, maybe it was a reference to when the pilot was made, if it was made in 09, or maybe when the voice actors recorded this. Because I know season 1 was... 2010 when it came out sorry that's really bad wording but um yeah i'm not i'm not redoing this i did this like 50 times the very second that the three get into lumpy space lsp gets immediately sidetracked to show off her house which is apparently way less lame than finn and jake's house i highly doubt that but i think it's just a little bit of a gag on lsp's behalf then the events go as follows. LSP bad mouths to her parents, she gets banned from using the royal car, has to call up her friend Melissa, who's dating her ex-boyfriend, who we don't even know anything about. I feel like just some of those details weren't needed. Like, I get it's part of her personality, but I really don't enjoy LSP that much. I find her to be more obnoxious. I love Pendleton Ward because, you know, he, he's done a lot for Adventure Time. But LSP herself is just really an obnoxious character. And half the time, I can't even stand her. I like the scene that comes up as the two boys are riding through the car, Finn and Jake. Jake is progressively getting worse, and you can see that visibly. Jake even loses his mind for a few seconds, and Finn becomes worried even more. Jake starts warning him in advance that if things come to worse, he becomes fully lumpy, he wants Finn to attempt to get used to it. And Finn's trying to hold back sadness, he doesn't want to come to that. But Jake knows that if things get that bad, Finn's gonna have to face up to it and just adapt. It's almost sad if you think about it. But... At the same time, the emotional weight isn't there. It's just adaptation, nothing too heavy. But if you think about it deeply enough, it really does have at least moderate heavy emotions. Melissa quickly picks up Brad, and there's a bit of comedic exchange between Finn and Melissa. But it's not enough to strike a nerve. But I cannot blame them for at least trying. Now, the five of them are on their way to make out point to attempt to cure Jake, which, again, is still getting progressively worse. And yet, there is another comedic exchange, this time with LSP to Jake and Finn. But it's, I would say, even worse this time. It's, like, almost two and a half seconds of filler. It, this episode really wasn't that funny. After that very poor exchange, Finn and Jake go and get the antidote. The people that they meet actually aren't that bad. Even LSP warned them about them being smooth posers. It doesn't really matter at this point, except LSP shows up and ruins everything. This is part of the reason why I really dislike LSP. She's just obnoxious as a whole. After LSP shoots her mouth off, and ruins everything for the second time. Um, the smooth posers, I'll just call them that because they are not affiliated with the name, or at least to our knowledge. The smooth posers ditch 
They're gone. Gonzo. Poof. Finn is very frustrated with LSP. One reason for putting them in this mess. And another reason for the fact that she ruined what seemed like his only chance to restore Jake. So much so that LSP starts crying afterwards. And even admits to her own faults to messing things up. But in my eyes, is that enough? For an obnoxious character like her, she doesn't really change at all. From the start to the end of this episode, she's still as obnoxious as ever. LSP storms off in a fitting rage and invites Jake to go to the prom but excludes Finn. Jake says he's never going to turn his back on Finn, but coincidentally, the lumpiness gets to him, and he totally says, I'm going to ditch this guy, or something like that. And it's just coincidence written so much, I don't like it. I hate it when so many things in an episode are based off coincidence. I like it if it's comedy, but when it's actually working its way into the plot the way it is, and it's not even funny... It just gets really annoying. This episode is like one big LSP. Finn is really upset with himself for a second, saying how he didn't save Jake. Some of the face expressions he makes in about a two-second gag is at least semi-okay. Enough to put this episode in the category where it's occasionally smirk-inducing. Not a very good reputation to have, but it's better than being terrible jokes throughout the entire thing. After Finn's little <clears throat> moment, the smooth posers return and explain to Finn where prom coming is. Finn is dedicated to get Jake back, but they explain to Finn that he can't simply just jump it. In fact, Finn thinks it's something considerably sacrificial. But at the same time, not really, as he still has the antidote in his hands. He forces the smooth posers to bite him so he becomes lumpy, just so he can float across the gaping void. Stupid or smart, I don't know, but it seems like a Finn thing to do, so I will give him credit where it's due. Good job, hero boy Finn. Finn makes it a prom coming and attempts to save Jake. Almost completely lumpified, Finn is begging Jake to sit on the antidote, and Jake is not having any of it. So much so that Finn ran out of time and got lumpified as well. One peeve I have about this is that why did it take Finn less than 5 minutes to get lumpified, and Jake probably about 10 to 20 minutes? I get it's to work its way into plot, and I wouldn't even call that coincidence, but it's just inconsistent plot. And it's going to happen a lot in all TV shows, because sometimes that's how the world has to go around in cartoons. But it's just kind of annoying, you know? Now that they're both lumpified, Finn's mind completely changes, where instead he doesn't, he doesn't want to give it to Jake anymore, he wants to keep it for himself. Jake's mind basically switches too, and he wants the ball now. It's weird how Lumpy Space really works on these two, and I don't know if it's because they're not from Lumpy Space that they act completely different. But it's still an interesting question to pose that I don't think we've ever got or will get answered. So, after the two are comedically fighting over the ball, Jake accidentally sits on it, returning him to normal. Jake is now trying to get Finn to sit on the ball, and Finn's floating away. Except, he bumps into some big, beefy, lump dude and gets knocked unconscious and wakes up completely fine. That was kind of a cheap conclusion, to be honest. The episode ends with Finn apologizing to LSP and just dancing at prom coming. Kind of a poor conclusion, to be honest. It may seem like I despise Trouble in Lumpy Space, when in reality, I don't despise it. I kind of dislike it, though. The comedy in this fell really flat for almost the entire thing. And the premise was kind of interesting, but everything felt like it was riding on either coincidence or just pure luck it was just not really well executed and i get again that tv shows will find that problem one point or another but the only positive i could really get out of this about the entire plot as a whole is it's a good thing it was at the start of adventure time rather than middle or ending when things got more heavy 